Welcome back everybody! This holiday season we're taking a full throttle look at one of the most incredible aircraft ever conceived. If you enjoy this, be sure to check out the rest of the full throttle episodes I'll link in the comments. Today on Full Throttle, a man with a beard, some math, and not nearly enough reindeer. That's right, with Christmas right around the corner, it's time to finally take a look at Santa's sleigh, which is less commonly known as the XC-1239. Simply put, it's unlike any other cargo aircraft. Imagine how much cargo you think an airplane can carry. The 1239 carries more. It travels so fast it actually runs the risk of accidentally leaving the atmosphere. And that's before we talk about its all-weather and vertical takeoff and landing functionality that lets it operate from anywhere, anytime, in any conditions. Even better, and as any pilot will appreciate, it has an open cockpit. What's not to love about this thing? Now, as you can imagine, the sleigh itself is highly classified and even its existence is likely censored from official reports. However, despite all the secrecy, we know the sleigh is actively monitored at least once a year by the North American Aerospace Defense Command as it traverses the United States around the Christmas holiday. But other than that, we have only rumor and speculation. Luckily for us, there are experts on the sleigh. Under an unnamed mountain range, nestled gently between a surveillance-proof rock and a nuke-proof hard place, sits the Norman Rockwell Reindeer Works. This incredible facility is reportedly home of the 1239. We asked for information about the sleigh and their head of public relations, Creature, declined to comment, wished us a politically correct happy holidays, and promptly slammed the door in our face. So instead we're flying a civilian reproduction of the 1239, which is essentially a home-built kit. So don't be too concerned if this doesn't fit your exact understanding of the sleigh's look and feel. While Rockwell wouldn't provide any details or specifications of the sleigh because that's all top secret, with a little critical thinking we can figure out at least some of the baseline specifications for the actual model. For anyone unfamiliar, the XC-1239 is reportedly capable of flying around the world in about a day and a half, if you include Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Now flying around the world generally takes a large commercial airliner closer to 48 hours and a fuel stop or five, depending on the type of plane. However, the pilot of the 1239, Chris Kringle, call sign Saint Nick, makes this flight and stops at the home of every child whose family celebrates the end of December in a certain way to drop off either a present or coal. All total, there are around 2.2 billion children on Earth, and approximately 1.4 billion of them would qualify for a potential Santa visit during that flight due to their religion or perhaps secular celebration of Christmas in their country. For our purposes, we'll assume there's an average of three children per household worldwide, and that there's at least one good child in each home, of course. That means Captain Kringle makes around 470 million stops during that approximately 36-hour period. That's a mere 13 million homes visited per hour and around 216,000 per minute. And keep in mind, that's approaching the LZ, safely touching down, likely on an angled or uneven roof, disembarking, delivering presents, loading up the milk and cookies likely left for St. Nick, inspecting the sleigh before takeoff, providing a pre-flight briefing to the reindeer, following all checklists, getting current weather and traffic, then ultimately taking off at a rate of about 3,600 separate homes per second. And that doesn't even include travel time. So how fast must the sleigh go to make this happen? Well, the Earth has a surface area of 1.96 million square miles, but only 29.9% of that is land. The rest is water. Unfortunately for the children of Atlantis, Cap Kringle only visits children on terra firma, so he'll technically only visit that dry 58.8 million square miles with a quick trip over water to get to and from various isolated land masses. However, for our calculation here, and just to simplify things a little bit, we'll assume that that those 470 million homes are spread evenly around the globe. So there are an average of 2.37 homes per square mile, which means that Cap'n Chris only has an average of 0.65 miles to fly for each house. 
That means the sleigh is traveling an average of 2,340 miles per second just to accomplish those 3,600 unique homes each second. Now that's around 8.4 million miles per hour and a mere Mach 11,000. No problem. That speed, which is about 125 times faster than the Earth is moving through space around the Sun, and 17 times faster than our solar system spins around the center of the galaxy, sounds fast, but it's worth noting here the real risk to any aircraft. Anti-air defenses. At least some good kiddos are going to be living in areas where the mindset of those manning surface-to-air and air defense systems is to shoot first and ask questions later. If I've learned anything from the military-industrial complex, it's that the bad guys are always about to catch us, so we need to spend another trillion or two to keep our edge. Obviously, that must be true, so we have to assume that some hooligan, somewhere, is going to at least try to shoot down the old sleigh when it enters their airspace. Obviously, someone has already developed a Krampus air defense system, and I'm sure Rockwell took that into account in developing the XC-1239's passive and active countermeasures. Okay. So assuming someone doesn't manage to shoot this thing down during its trip as it cruises around the Earth at just over 1% the speed of light, then the focus really shifts to cargo capacity. Even if we assume each toy is a one inch cube with an average weight of a minuscule one pound, the XC-1239 is still carrying more than 470 million pounds of cargo. Not to mention its own weight, the weight of good old Chris never skips a cookie Kringle, the weight of the reindeer on that day, etc. All total, that's more tonnage than two Nimitz-class aircraft carriers. Which really just begs the question about the propulsion mechanism. I won't get into the calculations of how many reindeer would be needed if we assumed that each deer averaged one mechanical horsepower, was expected to be able to consistently pull around 300 pounds, or how the coefficient of static friction between the ice and the sled skids really supports the idea that the aircraft's heaviest takeoff would be best done on a slick, smooth surface, such as the ice around the North Pole. Nope, 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 that would be just too much. Suffice it to say, I'm sure we would need a lot of reindeer. But we all know the song. Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen not to mention improper use of conjunctions. The point here is that there are nine reindeer on the sleigh. As we know, the lead reindeer, Rudolph, has a red nose, and since he's the leader of a vehicle generating more than 1.5 quadrillion megajoules of energy, that red glow is likely due to heat from the friction with all the molecules in the air. I mean, heck, there must be some incredible technology at play keeping the reindeer from vaporizing due to sheer air resistance here. Plus, given the open cockpit, I'm sure that St. Nick's beard is actually some high-tech thermal material to dissipate and wick that heat energy away from his face while flying. While we couldn't get Rockwell to answer our questions directly, we'd have to wager the reindeer aren't the main source of propulsion. Instead, we hypothesize they're an elaborate ruse meant to confuse copycats or saboteurs. It's more likely this aircraft operates with one or more hyper-efficient detonation combustion ramjets. With that technology, perhaps the reindeer just provide an initial force, however minuscule, for the ramjet process to initiate. That super spooky technology is undoubtedly combined with optical camouflage to keep the engines hidden from sight when spotted. That same optical camo is undoubtedly used to hide the cargo bay, which has a minimum area of 270,000 cubic feet for all those one inch cubes. But you know what? These numbers are so huge, it's a little hard to keep track of. Since we're talking about gifts or coal that are one inch cubes, what if Santa was able to package those together and deliver them three at a time? We are talking about an average household size with three children here. Well, the standard bullet on the A-10's Gow-8 Avenger rotating Gatlin-type autocannon is about four inches cubed. So let's just say Santa figured out a way to deliver a minimum of three presents at once by condensing them into the bullet of a Gow-8. As there are three children per household and each bullet can fit three gifts in it, he only really needs the one bullet. Wait, you know what? Hang on. You know, I, I don't like calling these things bullets here in this context. What this is, th this is a present delivery module. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with that. He only needs one present delivery module per household. We know that the Gow-8 rotating Gatlin-type present delivery mechanism fires at a rate of 3,900 present capsules per minute or about 65 present modules per second. So all total, if the present delivery device never stopped firing, it would take around 7.2 million seconds of continuous fire, or about 84,000 days to deliver all the presents. 
But that creates an additional problem because the bullet is only about 35% of the 30 millimeter round used by the GAU-8. So there would be additional volume to be transported for the gunpowder in the shell casing. I suspect that if we were to use the Avenger present delivery mechanism, we'd need another several aircraft carriers worth of area just for ammo stowage, replacement barrels, and that sort of thing. I feel like there is yet another A-10 variant available in here somewhere. But you know, when we think about Santa's sleigh, no standard roof could support this monstrosity landing on it. So maybe it hovers? And Cap and Kringle, the reindeer, and the sled, if they didn't explode, would at least be steaming given the energy they suffered during the flight. Do you suppose the aircraft has like a run-up procedure, like with the reindeer? Is that just calisthenics? Maybe Saint Nick can just stop time for everyone but him? Is there maybe like a wormhole explanation here that would allow the visits to occur without the travel and related air friction? Wait a second, maybe the multiverse is relevant here. A group of verse traveling Santas whose unique verses all have Christmas on different days so that all the Santas can help each other on their respective Christmases? Or maybe it just... Anyway, sorry about that. The XC-1239, Santa's sleigh. I don't know how they did it, but I'm glad they did. It really is like magic. Even if we would have gotten to fly the real thing, our normal full throttle testing wouldn't have been practical with Santa's sleigh. Nonetheless, we had to test it somehow. Some say he refuses to participate in the Reno air races until there is at least some anti-aircraft fire involved. And that NORAD tracks him year round. All we know is he's called the Rogue. Rug took the XC-1239 kit up for a spin against some air defenses in a mock battle. While the version he was flying didn't have effective countermeasures, he managed to avoid most everything we threw at him. It turns out the reindeer aren't good enough targets for heat seekers and radar guided munitions struggled to track the wooden sleigh. Merry Christmas and happy holidays everybody. Thanks for watching.